What's going on everybody? So I thought that I was going to be showing this video where I'm laying down the epoxy, but actually no, I'm not going to because uh, we're going to do another additional part two of just the preparations because there were so many things that I kind of learned and was kind of working through that I thought for any of those out there that might actually be wanting to kind of lay the epoxy down, um, I kind of did some research and put some answers down. So I kind of feel that if you do what I'm doing, you have a really good shot of having it so that everything sticks um however i can't guarantee it i'm just laying it down i have no idea if it'll really work or not but probably in about a year or so i'll do a one year review and let you know how it goes but here let's get into part two of the preparations what's going on everybody so it's now time to start doing the patchwork it's a little past eight so i'm getting set up right now and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started so i was able to find a third kit went out to Escondido and picked up the third kit. So I am hoping that should be enough. And if not, I do have some just kind of regular $10 concrete repair that I'll use just in case, but I think three should be good. But anyways, hey, let's get started on the next step because then after that, the plan is I'm going fishing tomorrow and then the following morning, we're gonna go ahead and paint it. So it'll have plenty of time to dry, even if I use the concrete, the, the lesser expensive concrete repair stuff, that's 24 hour dry time. This stuff right here, the Rust-Oleum Concrete Patch and Repair Kit, only takes eight hours, so I'll definitely be good there. I'm gonna be using that for the majority of the patchwork I'm doing tonight, and the other stuff is just in case I need to fill in some things that I um, just ran out of uh, the Rust-Oleum with. So, hey, let's, it, it's, it's time to get started. I'm pretty excited, a little nervous, Hopefully it comes out good. I'm really hoping it comes out good after all this work. Um, but you know what? I got things in place. I got a plan. And so it's just time to send it. Wanted just to show you real fast how much one was able to get. So it went a little bit further than I was anticipating. So that was a cool thing. As I was going through, I thought 30 minutes was going to be plenty of time to go through all this. But in reality, I got to like 15 minutes and I was only right. I was only like right here. So I was like, oh, I got to move. Um, so the good thing is, is that once, uh, although I got a little bit messy in some places, like let me kind of zoom in here to give you sort of a good angle on it. You can see that's definitely kind of lifted up. This will sand down very easily. Um, so this dries in eight hours, like I mentioned. And then what I'll have to do is come in here with the, some, with this uh, orbital sander and go ahead and take it down so it's smooth prior to it. Now that might mean I have to do an, 
I'm going to have to see how much dust it produces. I'm going to do my best to kind of uh, not to, to, to reduce the dust down to nothing as much as I can. Um, but in worst case scenario, then I'm just going to have to pressure wash it one more time and uh, wait 24 hours before I put, put anything else on. But I wanted to make sure I'm taking the time to do it right. But we'll just have to see how the rest comes out. All right, let's go to the next one. All right. Well, that is it. I ended up using two cases of the uh, Rust-Oleum, or two kits, I should say. Got little patches. I, I had plenty with the, doing the two, so I went ahead and even went over some of the little cracks, as you can see here, into the big cracks. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to do some sanding tomorrow. Um, I am a little tired. Definitely, this is a big project, and I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. i got to be careful as I walk around not to step in all these little patches. Um, it appeared that when the whoever poured the concrete for this slab used wood heavily. I mean, there's wood spread throughout the whole slab here. And I, and I went through and tried to pick out at least the stuff that was on the surface. And all these little holes and everything are the are the patches that basically where the wood was. Um, all the little random specks that seem to be just in the middle of nowhere. I did. I had to go over those with some of the compound, some of the patch kit. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty positive I didn't get it all, but I gave it my best. So we'll go from there and uh, we'll see how it comes out. All right, see you later. What's going on everybody? So I got some good news and some bad news. So what do you want to hear first? Good, okay, bad, bad, good, bad, bad. You want to hear the bad news first? Okay, consensus has it. So bad news is I've added quite a few more days onto the this project because of something good. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so look in here, you can see there are, if you look over here to this side, you can see where I've patched it in. It's kind of sunken in. But if you come over to here, it's completely covered over. So it's looking like it's good. And well, the instruction said, you know, if you put a little too much, you can sand it down. Well, I tell you what, I had a disc sander, a orbital disc sander down to 60 grit. It was barely making any work. Then I pulled out a belt, grand, belt sander on 40 grit. It was struggling. So finally, I went back to the diamond head angle grinder on the angle grinder attachment. And this is now what it looks like. So this is what I was originally hoping that it was going to come out like. And that's one of the big holes. Let me show you even on some of the smaller ones. I mean, I have to probably get in here a little bit. Like, right, it, it even filled in some of those small cracks, like no problem, and filling in the hole. So I'm really happy with this. But unfortunately, since I did get back to the grind and I got dust going everywhere, uh, once I get finished with this, and to be honest, I may even, depending on how it grinds down, I may even use my last backs, uh, last kit of patch, concrete patch and repair, and go ahead and try to fill in whatever any of the major cracks because uh, you know what I, I i just don't want to be like a couple of weeks from now being like dang it i had it why didn't i just fill in the i had the patch kit why didn't i just fill in the hole and so that's what i don't want to do so like i said i'm going to take the time to do it right i am a little frustrated as a matter of fact early on i, I started i just grabbed the angle grinder without gloves and my hands are kind of vibrating right now because I was kind of frustrated. But you know what? You get over it and then you just get back to work. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to show you the, I'm not going to do another time lapse on this. I'm just going to do this all off camera and because you don't need to see any more of the grinding. And then when I get back, I'll kind of show you what it looks like. And then at least if I decide to put on a little bit more or not. So I'll see you then. I got to state, as soon as I finished the last clip, the Milwaukee died on me. Um, but thank goodness it was still under warranty, so I got it swapped out. But if you recall how it looked before I did this, it was big fat blotches, not even. It was really not going to look good as soon as I painted. But now it's all level. I'm not going to have to lay down any more of the patch kit. So I am calling this a wrap as far as the repairs. Um, you can see even like the the little cracks filled in just nicely and yeah it's looking a lot better i'm hoping all this work you know is really going to pay off you know it's it's not perfect it's probably 95 percent because occasionally there are still like 
little holes in there that I don't think will fill up. Hopefully they fill up when I lay the epoxy, um, but I don't know. And if you recall this section, it was just all beat up. And I went over this, so it, it, it's kind of hard to get the angle grinder into here, um, but it's gonna look a lot better than it did with all the chunks and everything. So I'm happy with that fix. Let me show you another fix. I tried to go ahead and fill this up. It looked like it was holding, but overnight it just all kind of like drooped down onto here. So it looks a little better, not perfect, but whatever. I'm gonna call that a wrap. It's here at the edge. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So the next step is to pressure wash this thing down two to three times. I really wanna make sure I get the dust off of this cause I'll be uh, heading out of town for the next couple of days. And I want this to have plenty of time to dry. So, or at least it will have plenty of time to dry. Not necessarily that I want to. I would have liked to got it done sooner, but whatever. You know, things, things like I said, obstacles just get in your way and you just keep getting, stepping over them. But at least this obstacle is a mini vacation. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, I'll see you guys on the next step. Good morning, everybody. So today was the day I was supposed to paint. Um, and lay the epoxy down and do all the paint chips and everything. But after the drying period, even after going over the pressure washer a couple more times, I still have this heavy oil stain right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things. First, before I make it all dusty in here again, I'm going to try to just lay down the industrial heavy degreaser and just uh, let it soak in for a little bit, come and scrub it up and then see if I can get that out. If that does not work, then I'm going to go ahead and then I'll just come over here with the grinder attachment, with the concrete grinder attachment and just go a little deeper on this section. So that's probably the worst part. I have another section over here, a little bigger, um, but a lot shallower. So I'm, I'm gonna work on these two spots, see what I can do. And then, yeah, w one way or another, uh, I'm going to get these up, but it definitely means I'm not painting today. So I'll come back and show you the final project, uh, correction, the final product once I finish and the steps that I took to get it knocked out in case you have this problem. All right, so here's the first stain, and this was the biggest one. You can see I was able to take it down quite a bit. In order to do this, I let it soak with heavy degreaser on top for probably about five minutes. Came over with the pressure wash. That's what, that's why you can see those little striations. That's my 25 degree fan with uh, probably about two inches away. So that's why it's put, penetrated pretty deep. But I went over this three times with the angle grinder, the concrete attachment. So it was grind, wash, grind, wash, grind, wash. And that's where that stain is. And this stain, is looking like this. I was. I only went over this one time. That's why it's not as uh, removed as the other one is. However, I called. I called Rustoleum's technical support, and uh, they're just like, "Yeah, you got to get the oil up." So after uh, 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 at this point, I feel I've done what I can do, and I'm just willing to accept the risk. So I need to let this dry. I'm heading out of town for tonight. I'll be back tomorrow. So in probably about two days, we'll go ahead and paint. See you then. All right, everyone, so this is going to conclude this video. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the epoxy video, laying the epoxy down for the next one. And uh, I promise you, it will be the next one. And then uh, I kind of talk about it, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing um, a, the fourth part to this now series, which uh, will have a different product for the top coat. Uh, but until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's two times of the preparations, but I thought it was important. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.